Wait for me now, my son. Of course, Mr. Baker. Here you are, Mrs. Johnson. Ain't that a beauty? Yes. Maybe I'd better carry it to the car. Oh, no, no, no. I'll manage. Uh, just charge it to my account, would you? Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Thanks, Mr. Carson. Good day. All right. I haven't seen a weather vane like that in years. Well, nobody has. I'm reviving them. What can I do for you, Mr. Payton? How about an old-fashioned butter churn? Or maybe a sewing machine? Or just a little cracker barrel philosophy? Can't think of anything I need more. <laughs> Frankly, Mr. Carson, I'm curious. Why should a man of your years have undertaken a new business? Well, why not? I should think you'd have retired. Mobile home in Florida. Deep sea fishing. I don't notice a man of your years pulling bass out of the ocean either. <laughs> Touche, Mr. Cotton. As a matter of fact, I got fed up with the chandlery. I needed something new, a challenge, something to pep me up. This place is kind of lively. As long as the rent gets him. Where's my grandson? He's out making deliveries. Uh, Dad, Mr. Payton. Son? Mr. Carson. How's the boy doing? Oh, he's doing fine. Working hard. You'd be proud of him. Yes, being an errand boy is a rather magnificent achievement. Well, uh, you have to give him credit for wanting to make it on his own. He hasn't much choice, has he? Would you excuse me, Mr. Payton? I have some work to do out back. Anything special, son? No, no, no. Well, Carson, I've been meaning to talk to you. This is as good a time as any, if you have the moment. Oh, sure, sure. What about? About your daughter and my grandson, Rodney. What about them? As one adult to another, as surely you realize we're going to have trouble. We? Oui. What happened to Rodney's father, anyway? You taking Leslie's place? What happens to my grandson very much concerns me. Well, I don't think you need to be concerned about him. I think he's doing pretty well for himself. With that foolish garage? Well, I stopped in the other day. That looks to me like a starting business. Shabby little grease spot on a dead-end street. It's a phase, a toy. My grandson needs a testing ground to prove he's a man. Good, I hope he proves he's one. He's at a bad time. First, that unfortunate marriage to the Anderson girl and the preposterous trial. The boy feels cheated. He needs time to sow his wild oats. <coughs> I don't think running a garage falls under the definition of sowing oats, Mr. Payton. Well, when he gives up that nonsense, I'll be ready to guide him along the proper lines. Right job, right schools, right girl. Right girl. I think you understand me. Yes, I'm afraid I do. Well, then, what do you mean, well, then? What exactly is that supposed to mean? I don't have to spell it out for you. Oh, yes, you do. I'm interested in spelling. I have a very big thing about spelling, Mr. Pate. Do you think your daughter and my grandson are in love? Are you going to select a bride for your grandson? No, but in time... Are you going to give him a choice of, say, one, two, perhaps three eligibles? How oh, are you going to go about it? don't make me out some sort of an ogre, Carson. I want to save a lot of heartache for both of them. You can help unless you choose to abdicate your responsibilities. Well, supposing I choose not to interfere? I'd say you are foolhardy. Why? Because I trust my daughter? Because I have faith in her judgment? Perhaps you underestimate my grandson's maturity. Rodney has no intention of blundering into another foolish marriage. I haven't heard him mention marriage to your daughter, have you? No. But then I'm not in the habit of eavesdropping, either. Oh, hello, Allison. Go ahead, Mr. Payton. Please finish what you were saying. Mr. Payton? Allison, don't. No, I'd, I'd like to hear what Mr. Payton has to say. I don't think my grandson is ready for marriage. To you or to any other girl. You may be right. There. You may be right in your judgment about whether we're ready, but I don't think you have any right to force that judgment on anybody else. That may be your opinion, young lady. It is my opinion. It's also my opinion. Allison. It is also my opinion that you have no right to come here and express yours. You don't have to talk to my grandfather, or my father, or my mother. If you have something to say, you can say it to Rodney and me. We'd listen to you. Good, then. We'd listen to you, and then we'd make up our own minds. Well, girl has some spirit. I'm glad you realized. 
that. Good day, Mr. Carson. There goes the power and the pride of Peyton Place. You think he really means what he says, or he's just sporting for a fight? Well, if he's spoiling for one, Allison certainly gave him a battle. <laughs> she gave him a good fight, didn't she? She sure did. Why haven't I received my will? What takes time? We agreed upon the revisions. I don't want excuses. I want the document. What's troubling you, Wayne? Like you sound like an old woman. What? Are you sure? Then I must have my will. Immediately. Martin, what is it? Brian Kobe has disappeared. Wainwright sent him the usual check. The letter was returned unopened. There was no forwarding address. Then he's coming here. We don't know that. Has he ever sent back his allowance before? No. No, he'll show up here again. With more demands, more threats, just as he did before. Grasping fool. Does he think there are no limits? Not for him. He makes up his own rules and waits for his opportunity. Or as frightened as I am. I'm not afraid of Brian Colby. When he came here with a girl years ago, I sent him packing. Only because of the Weber boy's accident. Brian hadn't counted on that. He didn't dare risk exposing our sordid little pact. It paid him to remain silent then. You paid him handsomely. When are we going to stop paying, Martin? When we stop being afraid of the truth, Hannah. Of what it can do to us to my grandsons. And Stephen. And Stephen. We're more vulnerable than we were, Hannah. We've come to believe our own fiction. It's hard for you to accept the facts now, isn't it, Hannah? Anne Howard, Anne Colby, is Stephen's sister. They have the same father and the same mother. The only difference between them is you hate the girl, just as you hate her father. And you're afraid of him. That's why you're hitting at me, because you're afraid. Brian Colby is a threat to my grandsons. I promise you, if he tries to use that girl to bargain again, this time, they'll both regret it. I thought you built a wall around your grandsons to protect them. Your paper fortress, your new will. It may be paper, Hannah, but it's the only weapon I can use against all of you. Remember this, Hannah. Whatever Stephen may mean to you, Rodney and Norman are my grandsons. Stephen has no legitimate claims. If you go back on your bargain with me, you'll pay. And so will Stephen. Betty and I thought of planting blue spruce along the property line. But if we plant seedlings, it'll take 20 years before they're anything to look at. Well, you can get a certain amount of pleasure from watching them grow, huh? I don't have that kind of patience. <laughs> May I propose a toast? To all your trees and all your children. May they grow tall and straight. That's a lovely toast. You know, you're our first guest. Well, I flatter you. Let me ask you a question, Steve. You, um, you're doing some work for Ann Howard, aren't you? Yes. And you've talked a good deal to Lee Weber. Mm -hmm. What's your impression of him? 
Nothing definite. Well, he... He sold Ann Howard a used car. She needed one, and I, I dropped her off by then this afternoon. Rodney... Rodney implied that he might have sold her a, a clinker, a bad used car. Oh, come on, Mike. Are you suggesting that was some form of revenge? Well, that's the second time today I've been accused of being melodramatic. I suppose I should quit while I'm ahead, huh? You've done the impossible. You've gotten Stephen to talk about his work. Oh, relax, Betty. It wasn't a breach of professional etiquette. Not intended, not intended. Mm, that's very good. Thank you. I made them myself. You'll come for dinner one night when you can get one of the other doctors to cover for you? I'd love to. Mm. Wait and see. That'll be the night Mr. Payton sprains his toenail. He wants us both to be there. Oh. The physician and his lawyer dancing in attendance. I hope not. Well, he's not the easiest patient in the world. I can vouch for that. I say, Mr. Payton, here are your pills, and he tells me, mm. Mm. throw that rubbish in the wastebasket, Miss Anderson, and pour me some brandy. Well, I think a little brandy is all right for Mr. Payton, as long as he takes it in great moderation. But you'd better see to it that he continues with his medication. Mike, how is he? Betty's become very fond of his difficult majesty in spite of herself. Oh, Mr. Payton grows on you. You know, it's hard for me to think of him being as ill as he must be. I'd hoped you'd say he's holding his own. Well, I think for his age... Um... For his age what? He's as well as can be expected. Oh, come on, Mike. What does that really mean? Well, I'm sure you didn't want to spend this cocktail hour finding out about Mr. Payton's last physical. We're concerned, Mike. Stephen, I don't think it's fair for me to discuss my patient's physical condition, just as it wouldn't be fair for you to discuss your client's cases. We have a right to know. Well, it's getting kind of late, I you? Look forward to that dinner invitation. Look, Mike, I know how this may look. Yes, it does. It certainly does. Well, it shouldn't. The old man's been acting strangely. Stephen has the right to know why he's been like a son to Mr. Payton. Well, then, may I suggest you ask Mr. Payton? Excuse me. Mike. I certainly, uh, I certainly enjoyed the martinis. Good night. I think we've just lost a friend. We'll lose more than one before this is over. More than one. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. I need someone to share what's left of my life. So no matter how you feel, if Julie Anderson will have me, I'm going to marry her. You're doomed to mediocrity, Norman. You're still the same spoiled, selfish little boy you've always been. What did you have to do to get chosen, one? Get out of here.